Hi guys, welcome back to the new topic on constructors and destructors. This is our fifth video on C++ programming language. So constructors are uh, very important to object-oriented programming and these are basically special functions which have same name as the class name. And constructors are invoked whenever an object of a class is created. So let us try to understand what uh, constructors are with the help of an example. So I'm having one class uh, calling it as vehicle. Uh, it's having two integer variables a and b. And then I'm having this constructor naming it as vehicle. And I'm not passing any parameters to it. So this is nothing but my constructor declaration. Now similar to function definition that we have for public member functions we can have function definitions for your constructors too so in this case this is your class name and this is your constructor name now because there's no pro uh, parameters over here i'm just initializing these two variables with value 10 and 20 and then when i have my main function i'm creating a object v1 of type class vehicle so once this object declaration is done so v1 dot a is initialized to 10 and v1 dot b is initialized to 20 because call to this constructor is made as soon as this object is created over here similarly if you have another object let's say v2 whenever you declare this object and memory is allocated to that object and its data members so call to the constructors will be made and v2.a will become 10 and v2.b will also become 20 so notice that uh, constructors do not have any written values those are special functions uh, in object oriented programming so they don't have any written value Similar to parameterized functions, we can have parameters that we can pass to the constructors. Once the parameters are passed, uh, call to these constructors can be done implicitly or explicitly. So let us try to understand you know, how parameterized constructors can be created and also how we can make implicit or explicit calls. So I'm having this class numbers, uh, two numbers of type integer a and b and then inside public I have constructor numbers to which I'm passing two parameters int int and then I have another member function calling it as display. It is returning me void and I'm also not passing any parameter to it. So here I'm just accessing my private members a and b just printing those. Now inside function definition of my constructor numbers, this is my class name, this is the constructor name which is same as the class name. So two variables here x and y. So I'm just copying values which are passed at the time of object creation to the private members a and b. So inside of main function I can have a constructor called when an object is created and this is my explicit call wherein i am specifying values like this so this is my class name then my object name equal to constructor name that is the function and parameters so this method of calling is called as explicit call and in case of implicit call instead of this equal to and function name I can simply pass these parameters 20 and 30. These are my initial values for the functions. So numbers, then my object name, and then inside the parenthesis, I am passing initial values, which I can use to pass to my constructors. So whichever way you are comfortable, you can either make explicit call or implicit call, whichever you find easy to use. Now, once uh, the C out is done, I am calling my member function display so n1.display what it is going to do is going to print this line but n1.a is we know that it is 10 and n1.b is equal to 20 so this line will print a equal to 10 and b equal to 20 similarly when n2.display is called 
so n2 dot a and n2 dot b will be referred here okay because call is being made via object n2 so hence uh, in the second line it will print a equal to 20 and b equal to 30 because we had passed 20 and 30 these values to the constructors so here is the output for the program Then next we have uh, parameterized constructors inline. So this is uh, this is similar to inline uh, function declaration that we had done for member functions. So instead of writing function definition outside of class, I'm just writing it inline. So nothing much to explain over here. So th this is just definition that I have done inline. So it is the sim same program as the previous one. So output of this program would be a equal to 10 and 20 because 10 and 20 these parameters are passed to the constructors and values of uh, x and y are stored into a and b. So next topic is multiple constructors. We know that in uh, object oriented programming we can have same function name with different parameters. So same adaptation is done over here. Like in case of function, we can have same function name and multiple parameters. Similarly, we can have constructors with different parameters. And depending on the parameters that are being passed to the constructor, the respective constructor definition will be called. So let us take one example uh, for the class numbers. Again, I have two integer variables A and B. And in public section, we have uh, a simple constructor which does not have any arguments. And it is just initializing values of a and b to zero. And then we have another copy of the constructor numbers. That is uh, where we are passing two arguments. One is x and y. And we are using those values to initialize values of a and b with x and y respectively. And then we have another function display which is just going to print value of a and b. Now, in inside of main, uh, if you check, uh, I have created one uh, object n1 of class numbers. And because I have not uh, passed any uh, parameters over here, so this constructor will be called. So n1 dot a will become 0 and n1 dot b will become 0. Then we have another object that I am creating, calling it as n2. Uh, but here I am passing 10 and 20 as additional arguments to the constructor. So this constructor will be called for n2. So because of this function definition, n2 dot a will be initialized to 10 and n2 dot b will be initialized to 20 and after that we are just uh, calling this n1 dot s display function and uh, n2 dot display function so this will just print uh, values of a and b for respective objects n1 and n2 so this will be the output of this program so a and b are initialized to 0 for n1 and a and b are initialized to 10 and 20 for object n2 then we have constructors with default argument uh, it is very simple concept so in case of constructors we specify some value to one of the argument so even if we don't pass this second argument so this value will be utilized inside of your constructor definition so this is my constructor definition with one default argument and then I have my display function over here. So inside of main, I am having two objects created, n1 and n2. So to the first object n1, I'm just passing single value to the constructor, that is 10. So what is going to happen over here? So this for this definition, x will be passed value as 10. And because we have not passed any second argument, so y will be considered as 2. So value of a for n1 will be 10 and value of b for n1 will be 2. So after execution of this statement, n1 dot a will be 10 and n1 dot b will be 2. 
then we have a second object n2 wherein i am passing two values so 10 will be copied into x and because we are passing second argument so this value will be overwritten and y will be considered as 20 over here so after uh, this execution a will be initialized with 10 and b will be initialized with 20 and once this initialization is done via constructor so these statements will be executed and it will give you this output so these are values of n1 object and these are values of n2 object now the next topic is copy constructors uh, a pretty simple topic uh, here we just pass existing object to the constructor of the same class so in other words it gives reference to its own class as a parameter to the constructor so the same example we are continuing uh, with the class numbers and variable a and b in the public sections i have a constructor which i am just initializing uh, to zero values and then i am having another constructor with one default argument and i am using both arguments to initialize values of a and b and then we have another constructor wherein i am passing a reference to the another object okay so number under it i so by using this reference i am using data members of object i directly using the dot operator so i dot a i am using to initialize value of a and then i dot b i am using to initialize value of b then we have this display function instead of main what i am doing is i am creating one object n1 and then i am supplying two values to it 10 and 20 so after execution of this statement n1.a will be initialized to 10 and n1.b will be initialized to 20 and after that i am creating another object n2 and because i am supplying another object of the same class numbers so using the referenced value this constructor will be called and value of n2.a will become value of n1.a which is 10 and value of n2.b will be taken from n1.b which is 20 and after that i am just uh, dis uh, printing these values using n2.display function so this will print uh, a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 so this is the output so using copy constructors and the reference to the previous object we have achieved this now next important topic is the destructors so destructors are basically used to destroy the object which are created by the constructors the destructor function names are again similar to the class name but they are preceded by the tilde sign uh, which is this so this is your constructor and this is your destructor if you just notice i have added this sign over here we call this as a tilde sign and inside of uh, the constructor and destructor i am just having this simple statement constructor called and destructors called so constructors are called whenever the object is created and destructors are called whenever the objects are deleted okay so what is going to happen is when this object is created the constructor will called then this statement will be printed that is constructor called and then during the execution the second statement will be executed that is main terminating because this is always the second last line of the program and when return happens and main uh, function gets uh, completed uh, the destructor will get called and it will print destructor called so this is the output of this program now important thing to know over here is uh, that destructors uh, does not have any arguments and written value another thing to notice over here is when exactly can destructors will be called so a destructor function is called automatically when object goes out of the scope as in when the program ends or whenever the function ends or when a block containing local variable is ended or 
whenever a delete operator is called explicitly uh, for a class there can uh, be only one destructor uh, like in case of uh, constructors we can have multiple constructors but in case of destructors we can have only one destructors and those are default destructors so that is all for uh, this topic uh, in case you have liked this video do give it a thumbs up uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends and family on uh, facebook and whatsapp also in case you have not subscribed to the channel please do that and in case you have any questions or suggestions or in case you want any additional video to be done on a certain topic you can uh, write write those into the comment section below also i request you to write in your comments the course that you are applying and the course that you're doing so we get an idea that what the courses you guys are doing so whenever we are doing the next videos we will uh, try to consider that point that uh, you know you are coming for the certain stream so we'll ensure that you know the certain videos uh, will be planned accordingly uh, also in case you have any video suggestions do comment it below we'll definitely try to consider that and uh, try to create a video on it thank you so much for watching this video guys enjoy